It's guidance time! Today we will show you how to master rotation and therefore map awareness as a XB laner. Which is valid for solo queue but also 5 man teams. If this video gets 5000 likes, we will give you another XB laner video where we cover the 10 things you should never do as a XB laner. The typical YouTuber trick so the algorithm likes you, so <laughs> now rotation. The rule of thumb when it comes to the XB lane is just to be as annoying as possible. Me? This means to invade, cut waves, cause pressure on the objectives, etc. etc. When it comes to 5 men, Ooh. some of the rotations will be significantly different, because in a 5 men you need to rotate for the team's benefit. But as we all know in solo queue, having a coordinated team is as rare as the probability of BTK going to the MSC. So what you want to do in solo queue is to rotate where it benefits your team, but also where you won't die. Cause dying for your team and hoping they will do something about that is just as useful as Naruto's effects trying to get Sakura. Sakura-chan! By the way, that freaking minion is so useless. Why do you go close to Gwyn instead of attacking the turret, you little shit? Ugh. This generally means you try to rotate as much as possible so you can be more annoying than your counterpart, which means you're more effective and just better than this fecker. Now we know the basic rule of rotation, but to go further we need to know what gotcha, hero bitch. you're using, so you can use it to its fullest potential. Because when it comes to the XB lane, not all rotations will be the same. Some heroes exceed in other ways, and some heroes are simply better than others. So we must keep that in mind. Heroes like Joy, Nacht's Thick Wife as Merelda, Benedetta and Uranus exceed in lane cutting and rotation. I made a gameplay video about Uranus showcasing that, which you should really check out. Your objective is to poke the enemy enough for them to play passive, and then cut the lane when you know it's safe to do so. But some of you may be asking, what in the living hell is lane cutting? Well, let me show it to you. Lane cutting is where you're going to clear a minion wave ahead of the enemy laner. Usually when you cut the lane, you're doing the cut between the outer turret and the inner turret. You usually cut at the 25 second mark or the 55 second mark, as this is the time the minion wave passes through there. Those second marks are important, as no matter what minute mark it is, those second marks will always correspond to where the minion wave will be. When you do this cut, you will have more time to rotate around, as you don't need to wait for the minion wave to arrive. You usually will be able to clear either the mid wave or gank it, invade the closest enemy buff to annoy the enemy's jungler, or you can take a jungle creep away if your hero can take down jungle creeps fast enough. This is the cut you usually want to make as it's the safest one to do. But the real juicy stuff starts when you do a so called high cut. A high cut will be done at the 15 or the 45 second mark and it will be executed between the inner turret and the inhabitor turret. This here puts a lot of pressure on the enemy team as this will give you enough time to rotate anywhere on the map for a brief period. You can invade any buff you want with your team, clear the mid wave, go to the opposite lane to create the numbers advantage, the possibilities are endless here. The reason why you usually would not want to do this though, is cause you're putting yourself in a very dangerous spot. You're essentially in the enemy's territory, so it's super easy for your enemy to pick you off, as your allies most likely never even heard the word high cut. To change that, make sure to tell anyone you know about this guide, so we can change that back together. You should generally tell any of your ML friends and your cat to watch ML guides so they become better, but now this is too much self-advertising, it becomes awkward, so let's move on. Maybe you ask yourself if there's something even better than a high cut. Yes, there is. But this is only something for the real man who has big balls like Rock Lee. And if you're a woman, well, you're screwed because Naruto has no strong female characters. <clears throat> this is what we call the base cut. Or what some casters call the German cut. I don't even know why. It's pretty self-explaining. You go ahead and jump inside of the base to cut the mid wave and your wave at the same time. Cutting the lane like this is a super dangerous tactic for obvious reasons. But some heroes with decent mobility and high sustain, such as Uranus, Asmarel, and Alice can pull this off. This is usually done around the 11 and 41 second mark and if executed successfully you can essentially go anywhere you want as long as you don't get caught by the enemy plus you are freeing the mid laner duty of clearing their wave which also lets them rotate freely for the time being. This cut enables you to do so many great things 
but as it's super risky, it's not really recommended in solo queue. However, heroes with less mobility like Minzata and Terisla make lane cutting the lane make cutting the lane a lot riskier since it's harder to escape. If the enemy wants to catch you, it all comes down to how good your micro skill is. In the XB lane, it's not just about your macro skill. Your micro skill is also very important. The definition of macro and micro is the decision you make. Macro covers everything that involves the map, like your ability to gank at the right moment and your rotation for example, while micro covers everything that relates to the hero you are using, like your combos, your skill aiming, nope. etc. If you can beat your counterpart with your micro skills, essentially beat them in a 1v1 until they are low or die, it helps you to cut the lane more efficiently as the enemy XP laner is going to be more hesitant in trying to stop you. However, you should still focus on getting to objectives. And there will be times where you might even skip your wave to go to a turtle fight. This is usually done in 5 man teams at high elo, because in solo queue it's only done if you know the enemy's XB laner is slow at pushing turrets. If they're a good XB laner, the enemy will skip the wave as well and try to help their teammates with the objective your team is trying to force. This is the general explanation of lane cutting and it's usually the first thing you need to know to become a good XP laner. It's not everything you need to know though, so let's go through some other things you will do as a XP laner. The general rule is to make it to objectives if you can, which usually means going for the turtle in the early stages and to the lord in the late game stages. When it comes to turtles, if it's on the opposite side of the map, you usually want to cut the wave and rotate there. Or just clear your wave and the mid wave to cause more pressure. Clearing the mid lane is crucial as it's the most important tower and provides the most vision out of all towers when it goes down. So when I take down a side tower on the bottom side, it will give me enough vision for the green camp and the bushes around it. But if you take down the mid tower, the amount of vision you open up is massive, as this will expose both sides of the jungle. Here I could zone out Estes, which led to Zaz's death first, and then we could hunt Layla and although he could heal her, we could kill her and Estes because they had no safe spot anymore. So generally, nobody wants to lose their mid tower, and when you pressure the Tower, someone must come to defend it. Which means your team have a much easier time taking the turtle as Bruh. there are less enemies contesting it. These little things can make you a great XB laner and most people won't even notice it. The XP laner is often the unsung hero. These rotations essentially cover the first 5 minutes of the game, but you should keep them in mind for the mid game as well. In the mid game, split pushing becomes even more of an option as well, as the gold plate is going to be down. Once the gold plate is down, towers are more prone to be destroyed, making your pressure even more effective. Now I don't want to just tell you what to do, I'll actually show you how it's done in a real mythical glory match. Our was Brody Gold, Kagura Mid, Selena Room, Glue XP, which are we, and Balleric Jungle. So our team composition was kind of scuffed. They had Purple Gold, Freya Jungle, Lapu XP, Franco Room, and Vale Mid. So we will have a hard time against them unless we win early, which honestly was my goal. The first thing you do notice is I bought the boots and sold them at 14 seconds. It's a small tip where you can get the movement speed from the boots and sell it at the last seconds to get all the gold back and then prioritize steel leg plates for some defensive against Lapu's pokes. In the laning phase I'm incredibly aggressive since Glue's laning phase is stronger than Lapu's. This leads to him being lane frozen since he can't do much. Freezing the lane means keep your enemy away from the minions so they can farm while you stay in range. The disadvantage of having a strong early game laner is that good enemies will gank you early. Why you I gank my lane so I had to flip. Not much shame in it, I just wish I could avoid using it because the cooldown is long AF. Belleric, who for some reason was our jungler, <laughs> was dying so I rotated there to help him out. Map awareness baby. Then this guy was being harassed again cause he thought it was a good idea to check a bush blindly. Bruh. But Selena got a great stun on the Freya, which was where I then was able to combo her and Selena burst her down. Then I prioritized becoming level 4 and made sure to use the fact that my mage and Roma is here. Another good stun by Selena, but since she was hooked by Franco, I jumped right in to see if I could help her out. 
Selena was simply a gunner here, so I tried to latch on top of Lapo to protect my Kagura and possibly get a kill, which we ended up getting, which was dope. He even used Flicker himself, so this was more utility out of his hands. Keeping track of your enemy's ult and battle spells is something that is super super important. Next, Balric wanted some turtle soup, so I rotated there, but to be honest, we probably shouldn't have fought it because he was so low. And I already used my ult. Me staying there was also a terrible idea as I just wasted my life. All I could do was call ults. Yes, you can be actually useful when you're dead by calling who used their ults. When I got back to my lane, Lapu was kind of dumb trying to clear the wave when I was playing aggressively. So I just killed him. Flicker and first is a great combo by the way, if you want to either get a set extremely fast or do some damage quickly. Since I had molten essence and I had a good amount of farm, I was pretty confident on cutting the lane. So I did a high cut and rotated to the turtle that was spawning in a few seconds. Three of our allies died before that happened though and not gonna lie, going into a 2v4 is usually not a good idea. But since I knew Franco and Freya didn't have the ult, I decided to go in any way to get Popo, but I was a little late. So I went and killed Freya very quickly. I decided to do it cause I knew I could pull it off, but if you're not experienced with the hero you are using, please do not try to do dangerous stuff like I'm doing here. Also my marksman did back me up, so there was a very good amount of damage being pulled out. Balleric was even able to secure the turtle. Talking about having an impact as a XP laner. Master cutting the lane. It will be worth it. As you can see, I'm always backing up my teammates when there is something. Selena is getting a stun on Franco. I popped in immediately to make sure we secure him. While rotating back to my lane, I kept checking the gold and items. I realized I was 600 gold ahead of Lapu and he didn't have Fury Hammer, so he was definitely lacking some damage. But he had Blood Loss Axe for sustain, so killing him would be pretty difficult now. Looking at more things, Popo already got his Blade of this Bear, my Brody finally got Blade of the Heptasis and Steel Leg Plates. You essentially get the idea here, right? When you check on who's doing good and bad, you will know what to build next. This is something any player who plays a tanky hero needs to know. I really don't think I should have finished Cursed Helmet by the way if you mention it. Instead I should have gotten something like Blade Armor or something against Freya and Popo. So later I decided that Cursed Helmet was a bad option and since I was more worried about Veil, I got Athena's shield instead. By the way, please, if you see the enemy jungle like I did, you need to get the hell out of there. I did a terrible mistake here for staying too long as four people straight up ganked me. This is a horrible mistake when you're on the XP lane, so please don't be like me. When I came back I realized this fight was winnable, so I decided to go straight in. The three men set I did and Selena's stun on Lapu was honestly damn perfect. Kagura followed up and we got two people dead and a Freya who was running away. Since Brody was not being zoned out anymore, we kept fighting and put four people down. Here we did a good job at forcing the bottom turret, but we overstayed, so we essentially got fucked. When you're done getting your objective, it's almost always the best to back out. In the late game you can rotate anywhere on the map, but once I noticed our team was overextending, I rushed there and did a nice flicker set on them, which is why we killed Lapu and Freya. Pretty damn huge, as the lord was up. Map awareness is the key to victory, especially in solo queue. After we got the Lord, I tried to sink the wave, but since this was a duo queue, of course that won't work as a fight already started. I knew I could easily beat them since I was decently fat, so I rotated over there and killed Franco. Next we tried to end, but my MM had a little glitch thing happen. I don't even know what happened there honestly, but if he was in control, I think he should have left. After that, Kagura killed any hope they gained though. Brutal! Now is the time where the big waiting and ambush game is starting. Basically who does the first big mistake loses the match now. I noticed Popo was blitz pushing so I wanted to be there. But Kagura and Selena had the same idea so I decided to help out Balorik. By the way, a good tip against Franco when using glue, use your ult before he ults and you get a free ult on top of him. Since I kind of got greedy and wanted to pick someone like Freya or Vale, I got bursted so hard that I had to run like hell. Next is the perfect example where you need to predict what you 
allies are doing next. I was clearing the bot wave since I wanted to pressure this lane. So of course this was the moment my ally started a fight which I had to race back for. That I'm not there is my bad. Because you have to work together with your team. Yes, even in solo queue. We had our Selena die for Lapu Lapu, which to be quite honest at this stage of a game is a good trait. But our Belleric died, which was terrible. As he's a jungler, obviously. If anyone ever tells you by the way that camping is bad, forget it. Camping is great. Brody and I did well here to kill Franco, so they lost their frontliner who is super important in the Lord fight. Plus Freya ulted, so now it was even easier for us to get the Lord. If you pay attention to my position, I am not attacking the lord i am zoning out freya when you have some sustain it's just so much more effective for you to make sure that the enemy jungler doesn't even have a chance to get close to the lord that's way more effective than tickling the lord with your tiny tiny damage we got the lord and i don't even know what popo is trying to do here like what the hell are you doing mate what is that so we just killed him and with the lord marching down we wipe them out and end the game if you master those rotation tips you will really become the most annoying player on the team always think of yourself as zenny too when he sees a woman you need to make your presence known to everyone and make them want to cry now if you want to know which xb laners are really really good check out my tier list video right now See Oh, no, 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 no.